Anyway, we are starting with this as an image. It's the 1960s uh, pop art era. This is Roy Lichtenstein. And he was well known for the comic book look. And he took what was very popular and made it into art. And how did he do that? Well, he used the dots and I'm going to cl and yeah, let's just see where I got that. Somewhere down here is the pop art image I had on my desk for the photograph. Yes, a hundred things have happened on this desk since I took that photograph at quarter past ten. Um, so I'm going to bring this up slowly and close to the screen. Can you see the dark yellow dots, sort of orangey dots on the yellow? There's no dots in the blue or the red, and there's the dots in the background. So when things are printed, so in other words, this book, um, newspapers, things have changed now. Think A lot of things are done digitally, but in the old days, like the printing of this front cover, um, which is more obvious, it's all smooth um, colors. The, the screen printing industry or the printing industry uses four different screens to pre produce the colors. And in fact, we still use those same colors in our um, home, home printers on our desk. So we have black, yellow, cyan and magenta. So the cyan being blue, the magenta being a pinky red and the black in the printing industry is actually called key. So you will see C-M-Y-K not CMYB. So CMYK in the printing industry are the different colors that they use to overlap to produce what we know as full color. And each color was printed at a different screen angle. So this is all getting a bit technical, I know, but you have to kind of, I don't know, I just feel it's important that you understand the background. And I'm sure you might have seen sometimes in the newspaper or magazines when something isn't printed quite correctly it's what it creates what's called the moya pattern and it's where the dots weren't aligned at the right angle to overlap each other properly and you get these funny patterns happening across the the image and that is because each color had a different angle to the screen so yellow had a certain color angle i can't remember them i did know these at one stage i did have to write exams about them i can't honestly remember i haven't used them for about 30 years um but yes so black is your most dominant color so i think it had 90 degrees and then yellow and blue and magenta cyan and magenta had different angles and as they overlapped they would build the image so what these guys did is they took that knowledge and that process and what you saw in the printing of the comic books and they enlarged it so that it became a texture in the art and so the other person that I'm also going to refer to today is Andy Worrell so Andy Worrell is known for his Campbell soup and this is one where he did a hundred cans and there's another one which I also pulled up and printed out. Um, Andy Worrell was known for the Marilyn Monroes. These Marilyn Ro Monroes, there were four, five of them actually. And a woman came into his studio, which was known as the factory. And she asked if she could shoot Marilyn. And, you know, when we take photographs, we say, can I shoot that? Whatever. It's a term. It's a techn technology term. Um, you go to a photo shoot. So Andy thought he she was going to photograph Marilyn and he said yes and she took out a revolver and she shot at the stack of pictures of Marilyn that were in his studio and so that's why these are known online as the shot Marilyn. And it's not because she's been drinking shots or, I mean, she looks like it with this funny makeup. But um, yes, it was physically she was shot. <laughs> it's just a little aside information. And um, so these guys worked with the silk screening process. 
And silk screen is what it sounds like. It's a screen. Obviously, originally when they used to make them, they used to use silk as a fabric. It's now done with nylon. And each color will have been a different screen. So the black was one screen, the red was a screen, the yellow was a screen, and this cream would have been a screen. So in this one would be the same. So he would have used um, a blue screen, a yellow screen, and a pink screen for this one because you can see that the black is different. So each one is a different image of Marilyn that he has processed into four different screens. And he, on screen printing, you don't have the dots. Um, it's just a mesh and your ink goes straight through. I'm trained in screen printing. It's one of my, it was my second major at um, when I did at Cape Technicon, which is now called something else, some other university, Kaput, Cape, Cape Town, uni, I don't know, CPUT, we call it Kaput. Um, so anyway, so silk screening is part of my background. So what these guys were doing is including, good morning Radovan, these guys were including their knowledge of the actual printing world where they used the different screen angles and these dots to create the images and screen printing. And so those are the inspirations. Here's a little bit of, um, sorry, I'm just putting that down on my desk, on the floor, actually. I've run out of space on my desk. I'm just checking that I am still in screen. So what I've done here is I have a computer program called Coral Draw or Corel Draw if you're American, I have just for fun put my photograph through a whole lot of different processes that you can do to create different effects. I don't normally use these things um, so I had quite a lot of fun just playing around with them and pushing the different colors and so on because another thing that these guys did was they would take the same image um, like this for example and um, reprint it in a whole lot of different color combinations so it would have been the same screens each time just done with different colors so the blue screen here is done with red the orange screen here is done with green and the pink screen here is done with yellow. So in this case, this would have been the same screen repeated each time, just with a different color combination. So I'm going to try and recreate this look and feel, but obviously I don't have screens. I did have in South Africa, but I gave them to Luke's school. So now they have a whole lot of screens. And so we are going to try and recreate this look using what we have around the house which at this stage is some plastic folders which I've chopped up um, a blade and a I have great big craft mats um, this is actually the same size version and it looks better on my screen than it does in real life um, putting the dot uh, mask or whatever they want to call it over this image so that you can see what it looks like in extreme dots and so I'm using this as my reference today as well as that. And then what else did I get out to show you guys? Is there nothing else lurking underneath here? No. So I've pushed this as an extreme dot image, which I rather like, um, which would be very difficult to actually paint. Although very fashionable at the moment is doing dot art on, on canvas and on rocks. And people use these little tools uh, they're ball tools they're actually for molding um, they have them in the uh, icing industry for making cakes and things um, for molding petals and leaves and flowers there we have these for embossing or debossing paper through stencils that's what I originally used these for before fancy machines came out by Sizzix where you could em you had embossing folders and these come in all sorts of different sizes, which of course I don't have on my desk right now. But if you don't have stencils, because that's what I'm going to be using to create my dots. And I have pulled out every dotty stencil that I own. Tim has these um, also based on exactly what I've been discussing, dot fade things. 
I unfortunately don't have the mini version because that would be perfect for this project. So it is big dots fading into little dots. This one is called dot fade. It's a whole lot of dots um, that I can use. Then this one's called bubble. It's a lot of broken up dots. I probably won't be using that one. Um, and then this one is by All and Create. Can't remember its name. It is in my folder. I thought I would remember, but I can't. Can't remember what that one's called. And then this one that I have cut on my silhouette. Again, it's a whole lot of little dots. Um, don't know if you can see them there where I've used them through the gold. So it's a whole lot of little dots that I have cut. But of course, if you don't have this at home, you can dip a little ball image, a ball something, into paint and then make your dots. So I thought that would be another way to achieve the dot effect. I'm hopefully going to achieve at the end of this. Then the other thing I have got is two stencils for, uh, this is Hibiscus by Celebrate. It's a South African brand. This is, I have no idea. Um who it is made by it doesn't have a name on that I can see it's one in my stash so I thought this would be rather good for recreating the design on the candlestick and possibly on my vase so I'm going to be using stencils and then I've also created my own stencils because I don't have screens I have taken this image which I've printed out and I have literally traced it. So I put my plastic on top and I traced my flowers. So I've got two. Normally I would have a different sheet of plastic for each color. So in other words, for my green, which will be my leaves, I would have a screen or a stencil. For my red flower, I would have a stencil. And for my pink and white flowers, I would have a stencil. But I decided that that was just going to take too long to prepare and take and be too complicated. So what I have done is I have broken it down into two screens. I have made what I'm going to call my white screen and then my color screen. And I have prepared my canvas in gray. Um, and it seems to have something red on it that I'll take off. So I've got my canvas already primed in the gray and I'm going to start with my white and what I have done is I have taken a photostat so this is something that I will upload as a pdf on my youtube channel when I upload this later today onto youtube I will load this as a in the description I have found a way to upload pdfs I don't know if I can do it to facebook I will try and um, so you will be able to print out these stencils that I have now designed and cut. And what I've done is I've got some Tic Tac. In South Africa we call it Tic Tac. In the UK I think it's called Blue Tac. In the, in the America it's Picture Sticky or something. I heard Tim mention it and I can't honestly remember what he said. It has a term. It's, it's this uh, sticky putty. Um, picture putty that you normally put behind posters to stick on your wall and I've used little dots of that behind all my things so that I don't lose them and they don't get all confused and turned upside down because it will become like a jigsaw puzzle shortly so that's what I've done there and I'm going to start by popping this down and I need to still take this one out but what I need to do first, so what I've got is, let's line this up straight with my page, something like that, and maybe I will use some sticky to just hold this still. So I'm going to put that on my canvas. My canvas that I'm using is actually paper canvas that I have primed it, um, so it's quite nice and solid it's not moving anywhere so in other words i'm i've got the desk right underneath me for this and today i'm not working on an easel because i'm going to work flat so what i need to do is i have cut out the handle and the space in my design and somewhere on my desk is a pencil oh my word so, there it is right so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw 
inside here and draw inside there there we go before oh and I did of course draw so skew top it will disappear before I pull out my design that I have cut and there we go come off now I can pop into what I have drawn also using a tiny little bit in this case of even that's too big I need a microscopic dot of that even that's too big I'm gonna put that piece there of tic tac cam stick and I'll put that one there ah right maybe I need tweezers morning Anya I'm creating masks to be able to create the screen printed look and I'm trying to get some tiny little pieces of plastic to behave so I've decided it's easier to use some tweezers and then I need this piece which I'm going to put in there I'm just going to pop this back just to make sure that it is what's called in the printing world registered so I need to slide that slightly like that that one's perfect wow that's impressive okay another thing I forgot to do is I'm quite sure yes although I used a waterproof pen my pokey that I used is still going to come off so when I add paint that is all going to make one huge mess so I'm just gonna I should have done this before I stuck it on but I've only just realized I'm just going to try and clean this off there we go I'm just using baby wipe to clean off and I need some roller towel that isn't full of rainbow paint from yesterday so I'm just gonna clean that because otherwise my white will not be white it will be slightly brown and we don't want that I'm gonna have to remember to clean before I use it each time it's a bit of a paste but it is what it is um, and now the water has gone underneath there we don't want that either okay so learn from my mistakes people clean your stencils before you stick them down do what I say and not what I do usual story like a good mom okay so now that I've got that done I am going to create my white background and because so you could use your titanium white I've got a new pot of gesso here and I'm using you don't have to use this this is um, one of Tim Holtz's uh, tools I'm just looking for one that was white um, these so this this is foam like makeup foam like people use you, you know uh, those makeup wedges and things for putting on makeup so you could use that you could use a normal piece of sponge I'm using this because I want it to go on thinly and evenly if you use a paintbrush the chances of it going underneath are huge and also not only but also the paint will have brush strokes in it so what I'm doing is I'm just going to use the my craft sheet as a palette today you can use a piece of plastic you can use whatever and I'm going to grab a little bit of paint that is far too much and I'm going to even it out and I'm going to apply it in thin layers so this is going to take a little bit of time to build up the layers because if you go too quickly then it means you've got too much paint on your sponge and it will be oozing underneath and we don't want that so we are creating a fake silk screen look so grab a little bit more paint and then 
even it out when you run out just make sure that you don't have too much so I'm going to come here where I know I have a big space to splat try not to go over the edge of your stencil in fact while we're talking about that where is my masking tape I must have I don't know 10 rolls of masking tape here some so I'm just gonna pop that there I know that I'm framing these and that you won't actually see that in the long run but I do want it to be I don't want messes where I don't have to have messes so I'm just tapping my color in if you've got if you don't have access to sponges right now because of course in lockdown a lot of people can't go shopping and I understand that you might want to do this now you don't want to wait for corona to go away before you can play so just use what you have around the house kitchen sponge bathroom sponge any kind of sponge will also do um, if you use one of your makeup sponges it will forever be in your art room it's like the roller tile the first class that I taught that I put roller tile on the list of stuff to bring somebody brought firstly one piece somebody else grabbed theirs from their kitchen and then realized it would never look the same and it would never go back in the kitchen they had to buy another packet so we had a good laugh at that right so what I'm aiming at is nice flat even colors and I'm allowing these two to dry a little bit before I come back and add another layer okay so now I've almost got a nice even layer going on that need one more little layer going on here where's my crazy friend Olga this was her challenge for those of you who don't know already I said to her you know I can paint in any style because she said to me I want you to teach me to paint so I said well I can paint in any style what style do you want to learn so she said well I tell you what I send you I set you a challenge you say you can paint in any style well do that and I'll choose which one I like <laughs> so in my beginning first few weeks I think it's at least four weeks ago now it's amazing how quickly time is going um so when I started doing this whole art series I started with some basics and some beginners projects oh my word there must be ink distress ink or overspray or something because there's yellow seeping into my I didn't clean my craft sheet well enough obviously um so when I first started with all of this I started with um, Derek van Rensburg style and because um, I've learned an incredible amount from that man being in his classes and watching him paint I participated clearly I haven't had enough coffee I participated in quite a few what's called plain air painting um, events and plain air is where you are outside in front of your vista for want of a better description so your landscape your house your garden um, and you stand in situ and paint there you don't take photographs and work at home so it's how the grand masters used to do it morning Shamala <laughs> nice for having you popping in yeah people pop in pop out I'll be here I'm not going anywhere and of course it'll be uploaded onto YouTube right so you can I don't know if you can see on the screen that those two are really nice and white now but my bars is needing another coat so I'm just building up my layers
so that I have a good white coverage. It's as I said, it's much better to build up layers than to try and do it in one go because in one go that means you are putting far too much paint on and it will ooze and bleed underneath. These are washable, that's why I've got a whole jar of them. So if you're using the makeup foam or even normal household foam, kitchen foam, um, you can wash these afterwards and they can be used many, many, many times. It's amazing how much paint they actually do absorb. Okay, so I'm going to pop this on one side. Wash my fingers. And I'm just going to clean up here because as I said, clearly I did not wash to use a bit of rainbow. Um, I did not wash my craft sheet so the brown or whatever it was that I was last using on here is seeping into my paint which is not good not ideal let me just shift this down oh there I can see all the yellow oh yes it was from me doing art journaling the other day it's actually yellow and orange okay okay the white back right let's go back into screen da -da, da -da, da -da. down a bit so that you can see what I'm doing pops up like there don't mind me just talking to myself but you can hear me okay now what I'm gonna do and hopefully that is dry you can't use a heat gun, of course, with your uh, plastic because it will melt. Um, so do not heat gun through your stencils, people. They will dissolve into an icky, sticky mess. Afternoon, Venu. Welcome to my pop art inspiration today. So now I am going to use this stencil over there but first I'm going to use it actually to blow dry everything else and I'm not going to take this base stencil off I'm going to leave it there as a mask so that I don't accidentally mess outside with this stencil so you can layer your stencils to work in them and in the art world we call these masks so this is a mask we're masking off the area that we don't want our paint to go into that feels almost dry enough for today i'm going to go quite bright i think i'm going to go with some cobalt blue over here because the pop art they they used primary colors basically essentially um, and then of course the dots well Andy Worrell didn't always use primary now why did I put that there I want that here okay so now I'm choosing which way I want so I've got that leaf that comes up. Do I want it to go up or come down? I think I want it to come up and I think I want it to go in. So now I'm going to do exactly the same thing. And I'm going to put a blob of paint there. And find a blue-ish foam I've just had I am impossible my desk is actually quite clear there no what did I do I just took this off oh my soul okay don't worry people I have another one 
and I'm just going to pop a new one on there and I'm going to grab some paint on here and I'm going to tap it work it through my stencil again too much paint on your sponge and it's going to ooze where you don't want it so rather be patient and in fact I'm now <sighs> this is very fiddly and fine so I'm going to rather go with another kind of brush this is an ink brush but it is quite fine and again I'm going to use it very dry but I want it to wiggle into all those details that better wiggle it just a little bit what's it doing yay it's behaving okay so very little paint on this brush I'm going to create a palette for myself using using my spongy as my one student used to call sponges I'm just checking all the time because my white goes onto my plastic I can't always see where I am going hi mom from the other side of the studio studio from the other side of the flat Mary is my mother, Mary Munro. Hi, Amber. Who else is in the house? Oh, I put too much on there. So because today is pop art, there's no shading, really. Because um, normally I would be telling you I want the highlight coming from the right and I want the shadow on the left. But if you want to intimate at that kind of thing, you could make your paint darker on the left. So coming up the side, you could give it a whole lot more shadow. Yeah, you see, I had too much paint there, which has oozed underneath my stencil. I was using the sponge, which is why I switched to the brush. So now I'm going to use the same design. And when I look at my picture, I've got the sun is blowing it out there and I've got my image on the side and my image on that side. So I'm using pop art as my inspiration. But what I'm going to do is I'm quickly going to clean this with my wet wipes so that I can see better where I've been and where I'm going. And hopefully so I can see my see my pattern through a little better it would be easier if I did this on my desk of course but why make your life easy Belinda why make your life easy when you can make it really difficult okay let's just dry this off screen where my desk is relatively clear Right, so now I'm popping that back on there. I can see my... What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take my Koki. Mm, there it is. And I'm just going to Koki the sides over here on my stencil. So that I can see <laughs> where my top and bottom are because with the white going onto the stencil I actually can see nothing there we go so now I can see having said that I want I want paint on this side and paint on that side so that I can see where I'm going I want to leave this whiteness there too much paint 
and I'm going to build my stencil on this side and let it fade, which you can't really do in screen printing unless you um, actually fade so you can um, do an ombre and you can put different colors down and let them blend into themselves. Let's just see what's happening underneath there. Yes, that's kind of the effect I was going for. I'm going to put a little bit of color there. Just a hint with my now really dry brush. That's perfect. Okay, yay! And I know that this guy has um, a whole lot of designs going on there. So, but I'm kind of loath to use the same stencil. These two, so this was a much finer print of that one. Um, I'm going to leave it like that because I'm going to come back with some pen work I think um, on there because we're going very graphic with this so I'm going to put the graphic designs in there at a later stage at the end okay so now I need to make the pot and the bowl feel like it is receding so that's where these little dots are going to come in so I'm going to use Again, I'm going to take my cookie and I'm going to outline this so I can actually see where I'm working. And again, if this was silk screening, this would be another screen. And I'm going to take that off, pop that there, put that there where I won't lose it. Oh, and I forgot to put my phone on silent, so we'll have people buzzing again. Okay, throw that away. Clean my fingers. I'm just going to grab another piece of baby wipe. And clean my brush, because this will dry hard so I'm just using a baby wipe to this is a makeup brush bought specifically for art if you know me in real life I'm not a big makeup fan I wear lipstick and mascara at the best of times so I'm not high maintenance right that's clean enough it's drying it off Okay, so where was I? I was now going to put my dot fade over here. So I want it there fading out. And I want... So this has a whole lot of different size dots. I want the smaller dots. I want the smaller dots in there. And I'm going to use black for this. Oh, black! Scary stuff, black. Do I even have black in my arsenal of things? I don't even have black as a color out. Okay, so we'll have to use an ink pad. At home, people... Ah, oh, there's black. I'll use that black. Or maybe I'll just use an ink pad. This is permanent ink. It's oil-based permanent ink. I have black paint here, but it's a bit transparent. So I'm going to use same sponge and black ink. Use what you have, people. Use what you have. How's that looking? Perfect. I might want to overlap some of those bigger dots at the so those dots were quite small at the back and I want them quite dark so I'm just making them a bit bigger there we go and again here I've decided I want bigger dots because I want it blacker I want it to look more shadowy perfect and 
And this one is in the background, so I'm also going to add some dots, some light dots, and I can't see. I'm going to add some dots there. Where there would be shadow and I'm gonna add some dots here so now I'm shading with dots that's technically not what they did but this is my interpretation of my photograph done in their style oh look at that I went over there by mistake I went over the edge earlier in my excitement Okay, so we'll use that as shadow and maybe I'll put another layer over the top here of some dots as some shadow on this side, just because I can. That works. Ta-da! And then I'll do the same on this. Or shall I leave that flat? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do the same. And I need my black line so I can see where I'm actually shadowing. So it's there. So I'm drawing on the plastic so that I can see the hole that I have to stay inside of. There we go. Ah! There's nothing on that one. Where did I put it? There we go. There. Right. Now... I'm going to do my flowers so I'm gonna pop all of this away and I've been working for 45 minutes okay I'm trying to keep a hang on the time so now I can lift this off I was looking for. Now I need to move on to my, where can I put this? I'm not using my palette. So now I'm going to build my flowers. So now I need the outside mask that I have cut. So I have Okay, wait, let's clean. Learn from the first time round and just clean my cookie off here before I make a mess all over my existing picture. Right, so what was I doing? I was taking this off. And sometimes my cutting apparently hasn't gone right through. Or have I even cut that at all? Let's just see. Sometimes it's difficult to see where you are cutting with your craft knife. And apparently I haven't cut that. Where are my scissors? Scissors, scissors, scissors. Purple ribbon, there we go. So I just need to make a snip there okay 
Oh, one leaf came with. Where did the leaf go? Oh, there it is. And so now I have to try and line up. So this flower comes over there. That flower needs to come down there. It's not perfect because I seem to have a bit more flower going on there. Trying not to get a gray gap. So I would rather push my stencil slightly that way so that I don't have a gap in my lining up. And just going to put this down so that it behaves. Now I've got to decide what am I going to paint first? I think I'm going to put, so that's why I've jigsaw puzzled this whole thing. I'm going to build my flowers first and this funny little piece here is um, background color um, so I'm just jigsaw puzzling everything except the leaves onto my canvas So that I can paint my leaves and you should fit perfectly because I cut you out of here um. okay wiggle it till it fits wiggle it till it fits grab this one that one so basically what it's easier to see on here I'm going to be putting in my green and what I'm doing is I'm protecting my flowers that I haven't painted yet and I'm going to be using my pale green olive by it's the Krylo, so it's the heavy body, so that it has um, a lot of coverage. And I need a tiny amount. I can probably use a soft bristled brush for this, if I had one on my desk. They're probably all in the bathroom soaking. Okay, so let's see. I will just... This brush worked really well. Let's see what it does now. That is quite thick. And again, I'm going to have to just build up some layers of color. Because if you if your paint is too thick too quickly, again, you will, oops, especially as here, I'm dealing with joins. And it's going to, oops, underneath very quickly. So obviously here where I've got white of my vase, my leaf is going to show up a whole lot better and a whole lot faster than these guys. Okay, back to using a stencil for... A drying tool because remember you can't heat gun this it will melt so I just want this to dry a little bit so I can put another layer on top so yes people you get to watch paint dry today pop a little bit more on
just trying to hide this join and that bit of pot that's popping through. So dry it one more time. Because the layers are so, so thin, they should dry quite quickly. Let's just see what is left on my brush. Run out of paint. Where did I put it? Yep. I need a smidgen, tiny little bit. If your paints are very transparent, what you can do is first put either white or gesso down and let it dry and then put your green on top. Because in fact, the colors that I'm going to mix shortly, I'm going to mix with gesso so that they are nice and thick and have good coverage. Come on, get rid of that edge. Go away. No, it's the comeback kid. It's not going away. So while that dries, I'm just going to clean my brush. I'm just using a baby wipe. Because I don't want this brush wet. I want as little moisture in here as possible because moisture will just help it paint go diluted and I can't use a hairdryer because a hairdryer is still hot. This plastic is in it's I'm just using a folder plastic. It's incredibly thin and incredibly heat sensitive. So even the hairdryer would shrink this and we don't want that. So that is not ideal. Um, you just have to invoke your patience button, which I don't have. I have a lot of patience, but I want to move on. So, um, oh, there's a lot of paint still in this brush. Good grief. I could paint kilometers with it. That's a bit better. Okay, so now, and it's nearly dry already. Because you're putting on such thin layers, it shouldn't actually take long to dry. If your paint is too thick, it will take forever to dry. And then just step away, go do something else, drink a cup of tea, have a cup of coffee, FaceTime a friend. Um, yeah, let's just... Now I just want to see if there's any way that I can while that dries because I need to use the sticky stuff and stick it on there and I don't want it to pull off paint. So I'm just going to check and see if there's any way that I can go and play where I'm not near a leaf. For example this flower. I can take this flower out and I can play there. And just to be a good girl I'm going to put some masking tape there so I don't accidentally go into that leaf. I've stuck it on the stuck it on the plastic. So I'm gonna take some gesso and I'm just gonna put a few blobs down because I need to mix a few colours. So I'm going to use where are my reds I'm gonna make some pink and this tube is nearly empty. But you'd be amazed how much paint is still inside here. If you cut that open, um, which I do often, waste not, want not, people, waste not, want not. And I'm going to use some pyrrole red as well. It's a pleasure. Is it bandana? And I've got Pallavi. I've got a friend called Sardina. I know in India you put the emphasis on the beginning of the word because I wanted to call her Sardina. No, I wanted to call her Sardina. So of course it sounds completely differently. She says her name is Sardina. Okay, 
So yes, I hope I'm not making a complete hash of your name. Hi Lizette. I'm building layers in fake screen printing. So in other words, I'm making stencils. So I want a blue, red, pink here. And I'm using gesso because it's really nice and thick. Because where's my picture? I've got this flower. I'm not doing that piece. And that flower are kind of the same color. So I will... Oops, I've just painted something accidentally pink on my desk. Um, so what I'm doing now is I'm going to just use my brush because I want to cover this. quite well and I'm just tapping it in you could use a stencil brush you could use your sponge I'm just using my brush that I used to mix with and yes I'm using their style as in the pop art era style so Andy Worrell and Roy Lichtenstein but it's also with a bit of Belinda interpretation So I am trying to not shadow. It's very hard to go very graphic. So I'm trying to make sure that this color is as flat as possible. Okay, so this flower here, this is now dry-ish. Let's see what happens. Let's use this leaf as an experiment. Oh, thank you. At least I didn't... <laughs> destroy your pretty name All right so I'm putting the leaf back and I'm taking this flower out because I want this flower the same pink and I'm gonna put it back on there so that I know where to find it just now and grabbing the same pink so I'm using gesso and deep red because I want a blue red for the pinks and I think I just used too much paint and oops underneath and tapping it in to all the corners so it is better to go slower and build layers than to go too quickly. If it's going too quickly, you are using too much paint. Now I can come back here where this is dried. And again, I'm just going to use my stencil as my drying tool. Karen Deville, how is your beautiful view today? I do enjoy your posts from your balcony. My little window into Cape Town. Right. So of course if you were screen printing this you would be able to produce a whole lot of the same picture. And normally you do what's called a print run. It's like etching. Any printing process you do a print run. And you would normally decide beforehand how many you're going to do. So you would say do 10. Or if you're really feeling fit and able you would do 100. And each one would be numbered. 1 of 100, 2 of 100, 3 of 100. That's what those numbers are in the corner of a print. So it's, and they're normally traditionally written in pencil. There are all sorts of historical rules <laughs> that we stick to still today of how things were done. Okay, so now I'm happy with that. Looking at my colors, I want a lighter pink for this flower up there. These two are white-ish. Um, 
So I'm going to go and play up here while that dries. And I'm definitely going to need that leaf in place or I'm going to mess. And I'm going to use a much lighter pink up there. And you'll notice with my brush I'm working from the outside in because this helps to stop oopsing underneath the stencil. Obviously if you were screen printing you wouldn't be doing that because screen printing is a whole different process. You have a squeegee and it's going through a screen which is these days made of nylon. Okay, that needs to dry. Problem is I'm kind of drying that paint at the same time. That's not ideal. Okay, last layer on this guy. Oh, and I've got some darker pink coming through. Don't want that. Right, almost done with that one. I'm going to leave that one to dry for a little bit. What is left? I've got these two guys and my big red guy. So now, now, hmm, these two guys are almost dry, no they're not, let's paint, watch paint dry a bit more, because now I'm thinking maybe I should put spots in them too. Pop the stencil over the top and have different color spots in my different color flowers. So now, where did I throw that stencil? Over here. And I've got the light paint on my brush and I'm going to So of course, if you're using this tool, you would just put your little dots in rows. If you don't have a stencil. Because I know in these lockdown times, we don't have a lot of stuff. We are lucky here in Germany, they're starting to lift it. There, that works. I'm going to put a little bit over here too. I'm working with a very dry brush and just wiggling it through. My stencil. It's very difficult to see where I've been. And now I've moved it. Oh, silly Billy. Okay, that'll just have to do. And I'm just going to clean my stencil. Where's my wet wipe? Over there. cleaning my stencil and then I'm going to pop it down over here and I'm going to go with a bit of the darker red over the top. So the look I'm trying to achieve is like this darker yellow dot on top of the lighter dot. So I'm just kind of putting where I know my shading goes 
for the middle of this flower and again one's not supposed to be shading but as I said I'm combining my style their style too much paint bad 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 girl blobbed underneath So if you were using the dot tool, you'll have a whole lot more control, but I'm not doing that. Okay, try it again. Thanks, Francis. <laughs> All the layers, I'm trying to build the layers. So I've got my last three flowers to go. Then I'll do something in the background and then I'll be done. It's, I've, been, I've actually been painting, I think, for an hour. Been online for an hour and 10 minutes because today I remember to bring the ca uh, clock and I'm trying to dry this so that I can put trying to dry this so I can put these things back where did I put that one? Oh, I am my own worst enemy no I've lost that one where did I put it? Yeah. Oh, found it. It's even worse if you're working with clear plastic. These things disappear. Gone. Forever. Until you're vacuuming and you hear something strange go up the vacuum and then you realize it's that thing you were looking for. Okay. So now I can pop this guy back here. Oh, and I've got my wet brush on my arm. The same. And I need to put this one back. And take this piece of sticky tape off, masking tape that's saving that one. And I need to put that one back. That one. now and I need to put my leaves back so I'm going to protect all my leaves because they are now nice and dry last leaf in Now I'm going to paint that flower and I'm going to paint this one, well it's white-ish and I've always been putting a little bit of yellow ochre in that one in my other series. I'm going to put a dot of yellow ochre over there and seeing as I've forgotten my water jar I'm going to just wrap this brush in my wet wipe so that it doesn't dry up and grab a new brush because I don't have a shortage of brushes grab a new blob of white a little bit of yellow ochre so that I have sort of a creamy flower because otherwise it's not going to stand out against the white of the even though I put the dots there it's not going to stand out against the white of my jug. So again, I'm just working in thin layers because the thinner your layers, the better your paint will behave and the faster it will dry in between. Then you don't have to wait so long. And while I'm waiting for that one to dry, I'm going to come and work on my red guy. So now I need to, I think I need to snip yeah, somewhere along the line in my cutting using my craft knife. I missed 
missed this bit. There you go. So that one must go back there. And I'm going to go with the pyrrole red over here. Oh, coffee. Thank you. Oh. Ice cold, but it tastes the same. Thank you. Um, I need another brush. I'm going with the pyrrole red, which is what I've been using in all my other pictures. And again, I'm working from the outside in, just wiggling it lightly, trying to make sure that I get into all those nooks and crannies and crevices. As I'm doing this, a lot of these pop art things were outlined. And I'm going to decide once I take everything off and I'm finished doing the stencil work, screen printing, um, whether I'm going to outline with a Koki or not. I might. I might not. I'll put my full set together because I want these to work as a set. Tomorrow I'm doing Kandinsky. He did the kiss. So I will be working in his style. So these last two ones are quite graphic. So these first few projects worked really well for this subject matter. I'm not so sure that it's worked well for this last, these last ones, but it is what it is. The challenge was set and I said I would do it and I'm rather enjoying this. Making it my own, taking from the era what they used how they did it, doing the research, enjoying the process, and then making it my own. Because after all, I'm the one that's going to have to live with this on my wall. I do actually want to put these up. Sorry, there's a piece of something lurking there. And while that dries, I'm going to come back and put another layer on here. Because again, although I am using gesso, the minute you add another color to it that's transparent, you dilute the consistency and make it thinner. So you will need to, and I mean, when I did the white, it took me a few layers before I got it solid. And I could use a sponge. This is a nice big area. I'm probably going to need a third layer on that. So I'm going to come back and just blow dry. When I say blow dry, for those who've just popped in, you can't use a hairdryer or a heat gun because the plastic will melt. It's very thin folder material that I've used um, to build my stencils. So if you use a hairdryer, you will not be able to match your stencils up again. So I'm afraid this Facebook Live is a bit more about watching paint dry than anything else at the moment. I might actually, because I'm looking at this big blob, and although Andy Worrell did those flowers, he's famous for those big blobby flowers. Um, I don't know that I want mine to be blobs. I left them as blobs because that is what he did. I didn't print them out, but if you Google Andy Worrell flowers, they will come up as these bright yellow, a bright yellow, green, and I think blue um, image. Done. Back to this guy last coat then it'll be nice and solid and 
Yo, this one is going to be interesting. Hmm. Because there were two white roses that were next to each other. So the one I've just done now is that one, and then there's this one. So I could do it white. Let me just pop this one in the roller towel, keep it wet. And now let's have a look see. I'm going to take easier said than done. And again, he's attached. Let's pop it back over there. Blow dry a bit more because I need to stick there to protect that guy. Happy little flowers. Note mine things always guys. I've noticed. It's never girls. Flowers should be girls, don't you think? Maybe the leaves can be guys and the girls can be flowers. I move that. Ah, no, far too wet, far too wet. Goodness, did I not learn? I just stuck it there. Right. Now I'm going to make a paler version. Roll red in it. I just need a different color. I know it's white, but I need a different color flower, otherwise. They're all gonna be the same. So I've made a peachy color. So I've combined a little bit of what I had on my brush, which was the um, yellow ochre to create that color. And I've got a little bit of the pyrrole red, which is that color. So here in the middle I can go a bit gung-ho, but around the edges I'm being quite careful not to go where I shouldn't. And drying it again. What has happened? My screen has frozen. Have I died? Let me just take... I can still see. Let's just refresh. Um, how do I refresh? Oh, there we go. I'm back. <laughs> I'm not blow drying yet. Facebook is really behind me today. It's quite bizarre doing one thing and watching yourself doing another thing on the other screen. Okay, I'm going a bit thicker than I should have, but my paint over there, ironically, is drying faster than my paint here. Hi, Cheryl. I don't know how far behind my iPad is from what I'm doing in real life. I'm still blow drying, I see. Okay, now... Let's see how far I am. So at this stage, I've got paint underneath all my pieces. That is dry. Let's start removing everything. So I'm going to wait. I need to put this guy back. 
because now I need to start working in the background. So I've finished all my objects. That of course is still wet, but it's not anywhere near one of my objects. So I'm going to try and extricate my background from here. Tic tac off there. Now I need these guys back, but I need this off because now I'm going to work in my background areas. So I'm going to pop that back on my puzzle piece and this tiny little guy that gave me such grief earlier. I'm putting back on there. Okay, so now I have, I need these objects back. So the cutouts. there this guy over here um, this guy who doesn't have any sticky yet I need to put some sticky there and some sticky there and just try and make sure that I um, as registered as what the term is for silk screening as registered as well as possible okay that is still drying so I must remember that that doesn't have a cover or maybe I just will blow dry it a little bit more oh that's still very tacky and while I'm blow drying that let's look for my wet wipe and roll that guy in there as well just don't forget about your brushes in the wet wipe like I did the other day and came back the next morning and there were these rock hard brushes. Thankfully I have brush cleaner and I could resurrect them but oh my soul. I should be had up for brush abuse sometimes. Right so now I want to create my background and I am deciding what I'm going to use so I did do this computer generated thing of dots for my background which I rather like and so I think I'm going to use I've got two stencils here that I could use. So I've got this one which I'm going to put the big guys over here and pop that down like that and I quite like because I'm just using what I have. I also have this dot stencil which I think I'm going to use on the floor. So I now need to just decide where my floor is going to be and pop some masking tape on so that I don't go over it. So now if I'm looking at my actual image it is at the back over there so it is in line with the edge of my and somewhere there right okay and what color am i going to use is the next million dollar question hmm i think i'll go with black Oh, this has gone hard. I'm going to have to resurrect this brush. 
and I'm going to use my black ink again. Total cheat, I know you would use paint, but I'm using what I've got. Um, oh, being careful not to go over my edges of my stencil, which I'm famous for. Let's just check and see how that's working. Yes, I like that. And what I'm going to try and achieve is I'm going to make it really dark around my image. Put a lot of paint there, or in my case ink, and I'm going to let it just fade out towards the top because this has sort of a faded feel to it. And so I want to try and create a similar effect just using more and less paint. Being careful not to go over that edge as well. is hard because one gets carried away okay what is it looking like ha I like that right now down at the bottom I think that's dry enough to put this piece back now before I accidentally oops in. The stencil that I'm using, um, let me get the name. It's by All and Create. Where is my folder? If Olga was in the house, she'd be able to tell me. I think it's called Just Dotty or something. Hang on. No, that's my German file. Where's my file with all my stencils? Hang on a second, people, while I look for my file. Oh, good grief. I put it back where it belongs. It is this stencil. It is called Totally Dotty by All and Create. You can use anything. As I said, for those of you who came in later, obviously I'm using what I've got and I'm lucky enough to have this. You can use this dot tool. There's lots of how to dot videos out there. So you load it with paint and you dot. So you can actually create your own dots um, in the background using a tool. You don't have to use a stencil. I happen to have one, so I'm using it. And there's a piece missing here. Where did it go? I think it's attached to my stencil. Oh, so uh, no. How did that happen? Did it stick to this one? Oh, it's like a Bermuda Triangle here. No, that one doesn't have it. That goes around. Oh my word. Ta -da, ta -da, ta -da. Oh. Oh, she says, I need to just protect there. I'm going to probably make that dark. Actually, let me just make that dark right now. That should be dark because it's inside behind the behind the plants and things. So it needs to be shadow. And 
and then in actual fact then this piece here also needs to be shadow because it is the nothing piece in between as well and I'm gonna lose it let me just stick it where it belongs It's a pleasure. No bother at all. Okay, so now, no, no, no. I need to create this floor. This is Tim's stencil, and then this is one that I've created. I think um, TCW. Is it TCW? It's Alphabet C. Um, crafters warehouse have a similar stencil that's where I got the concept from and I just put dots on my screen and cut them on my silhouette um, so I'm now looking for something that I can build my ground maybe I should come at an angle because these are very horizontal maybe I should try and build my ground at an angle or maybe I should have a different color. Um, excuse me while I just think and clean my desk before I land up with this all in a mess. And while I'm thinking, I'm just going to um, add some extra dots on this edge. Um, over here and I'm gonna add some extra dots on this edge I'm still while I'm thinking I'm still not answering myself um, hmm. Maybe I should do just the same thing. No, because I don't want to use the same stencil. And I've only picked these top dots because I got terribly bored doing it and they look the same as those dots so now I'm thinking that they must be a different color okay so they're gonna be blue blue dots for the table blue dots for the table and that's gonna be interesting because as I said I don't have a lot of dots picked out and I now need to go back to my blue paint so I'm just trying to repeat colors and go back to my paintbrush which I've just had and commented on the fact that it was hard oh we need a triangle go away right so I need to bring that right up to there and do these dots here so I'm gonna just I'm sure you could use archival gray for the lighter effects I'm sure you you, you can use whatever you like yes use what you've got um, I have archival gray but I think it's the same gray as this and it's not going to show up um, so now I'm just going to try putting blue dots in. Which is of course dissolving the green that was already in the brush. And I'm going to come on 
this side. And I think because there's a bit of sunlight over here, I'm actually going to come with some white. I'm going to come with some white over here, down in the front. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to use, go back to my applicator tool for that. Far too much paint. Okay, let's see if I can get this right. So I want to try and create that feeling of this. Oh, where's my picture? Buried. Buried, buried, buried. So I just want to create this feeling of this highlight coming in the front here. So I'm going to create it with some white dots. Sorry, can't talk and concentrate, apparently. Okay. Now the great reveal. And I'm going to stick these back on their sheets as I go, so that I don't lose them. Not that I'm probably going to use them again, but why not? My dear friend Olga might want to borrow these when lockdown is over and we can finally meet for real coffee instead of virtual coffee. Slowly but surely, here comes the picture. <laughs> it's quite exciting. It's like magic. As all the messy, overpainted stencils are removed. Almost done. Okie dokie. So now, <laughs> here's my dotty version of, of that. Let's see how I'm doing. Yeah, it's looking positively dotty. I do think that in order for it to look more pop arty, so I'm kind of combining a whole lot of concepts here, is that it now actually does need its black outline. The only thing is cookies and wet paint are not a good combo. So I am going to probably sit with the cookie and outline everything off screen. Because now I've been painting for an hour and 45 minutes. So 
I will post the finished picture once I have done my outlines because I feel it needs the outlines just to pull it all together. But I need to be able to um, put my head closer to it and so on. So I don't want to get my head in in shot. And yeah, so I will post the uh, PDFs of the tracings online for you guys. So if you do want to give this a try, by all means, go for it. Thanks for watching today, guys. It was fun. Bye.